Act 5, Scene 4 is a scene which is important not in terms of a psychological revelation but in terms of developing action. It takes place in the country near Barnum Wood where uh, Barnum Wood surrounding Dunsany and Hill where Macbeth's fortress is and um, all of the rebel courtiers are moving towards the, the rebel themes are moving towards Macbeth's castle to the king's castle and there are soldiers marching and Malcolm is heading them cousins I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe a very ironic reference to the dangerous chamber in which Duncan was murdered and uh, and and therefore the the reference to that previous scene here again this recurrence is an indication that things are coming back but that things may also be turning for and and moving towards a better future if it's if it's able if if these things are able to accomplish their actions and what would and seward says what would is this before us because he's from england he doesn't know much about scotland so he asks for that information and mainit says mentit says the wood of barnum malcolm let every soldier hew him hew means cut down a bough or a branch and bear it before him thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make our discovery or in report of us what malcolm here does is that he orders each and every soldier to cut a branch from the forest of burning wood and use it to cover themselves so that the 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 watchers from Macbeth's castle are not able to directly see them and therefore not able to directly gauge or understand their numbers so they can be easily overwhelmed this is the reason Mac Malcolm does it except that when the watchers from Macbeth's castle and when Macbeth himself sees them from a height from quite a height above and you all will see uh, see before you illustrations of the dancing in uh, fortress which is so high up the hill that it become that it appears to him that it's almost as if a group of branches or in short the whole of the forest or the woods is moving towards him this is how the words of the witches the equivocating words of the witches are really revealed in terms of their real meaning so it's not that what they had told is false but it's also not that what they are told is not false malcolm it is main ho his main hope for where there is advantage to be given both more and less have given him the revolt and none serve with him but constrained things whose heart are absent too so uh, the hope which macbeth believes his 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 belief that he's going to be undefeated it is that proud belief that malcolm hopes at attacking because once you are you fortify yourself with extreme pride then uh, once you begin to not listen to others it is at that point that your enemy that your opponent rather can actually assault you and destroy you Macduff let our just censures it's Macduff who really makes us realize or makes this short intervention using the word just to make us to make the audience realize that what they are doing what malcolm and macduff uh, along with the help of um, the english ruler seward is doing is just it's important to define this action as just because rebellion as such is not seen as just even if you're acting against even if you're rebelling against a tyrannical ruler therefore to present your action as just as something for the good of the country is important so that uh, the people the audience know that there can be things like justified rebellion um, and then finally the words of seward the time approaches that will due decision make us know what we shall say what we shall say we have and what we owe thought speculative their unsure hopes relate but certain issues strokes must arbitrate towards which advance the war here seward of course is the voice of war and uh, seward is the voice of 
proper decision making and proper responsibility which comes with war and he adds one short thing that's thought speculative their unsure hopes relate so thoughts are something which a person may use to deliberate with a person may use to really ponder upon actions but war requires very strong decisions war requires a certain answer requires a certain answer, requires a certain amount of um, fixity of thought and assuredness of thought and it is with that kind of assuredness on the one hand through seward and with a kind of uh, definition of justness through the voice through Macduff and it is through the practical way in which Malcolm is leading the army that the final assault on Macbeth is shaped. In Act 5 scene 4 we had witnessed the response of the rebel army towards as they were advancing towards Macbeth's castle. Now we get the perception from within the walls of the castle at Dunsanin. Macbeth, hang our banners on the outward walls. The cry is still, they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. So Macbeth is saying that the castle, just like himself, is looking upon the invading army with scorn is looking down is looking down at the rebel invading army with a sense of extreme contempt that they won't be able to defeat this castle so uh, till famine and egg that is plague eat them up were they not forced with those that should be ours we might have met them dareful beard to beard and beat them backward home so uh, really at this point Macbeth is so full of himself that he feels that everyone who is standing in opposition to him deserves only scorn and contempt and nothing else. It is at this point, at this high point of Macbeth's pride that the most disastrous of the news in his life comes to him that is a report of lady macbeth who has died it's the cry of women my lord and macbeth i've almost forgotten the taste of fears the time has come my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek and my fell of hair would at a dismal treaties rouse and stir as life were in it i have supped full of horrors direness familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once start me this speech very important very important which states really that the cry of horror which he which he listens to the shrieks which he listens to he understands that it's of something horrendous which is taking place but he says that now he has become so much separated from any kind of human emotion which requires human interaction that he's almost become like a like an inanimate creature almost like to use very 21st century word a robot a person who has no feelings who, who cannot interact with feelings because he's so afraid to encounter them so he has committed so much so many horrors in his life he has supped full with horrors that now it has stopped to affect him and then satan comes and says and the rather reports the queen my lord is dead and the way macbeth responds to the news of lady macbeth's death very very important to be compared and contrasted with a number of things first macduff's response to his wife's death um, macbeth's own response to his wife's news of his wife's disease and what really the the way Macbeth has traveled in the course of his becoming so hardened in terms of uh, hardened as an emotional being it, it's a very uh, cold response it's not a response where he is involved because really now things emotions emotions are just things which really do not affect him she should and he says she should have died hereafter she should have died hereafter there would have been a time for such a word and uh, so there's really a one-liner of a response to his wife's death that 
she should have died sometime and she has died now and after this what we have is the final uh, is one of the last soliloquy of macbeth and it's a brilliant one uh, not only because of its structure and the poetic images of time and a life that it uses very conventional images but of course used in its very own unconventional way but because it comes at that point where we had where we have made that statement that macbeth really has become incapable of interacting with human emotions it it's yes macbeth has become incapable of interacting with human emotions therefore he avoids them he he doesn't ponder much on them he really doesn't think about them he's not an introspective being but there's something still left within macbeth and this makes him not just a hardcore villain uh, or just a pure murderer who sort of randomly goes on killing people to to really satisfy his false sense of insecurity but a tragic character there's a difference between a villain and a tragic character and it is speeches like this which make clear to us what that difference is it is at that point when we call a person a hardcore villain who does not interact with human emotions it is at that point that a speech comes a soliloquy comes where we are forced to say that this person really has been able to analyze to what extent he has hardened and what all it entailed what all it took from him and therefore uh, shakespeare presents to us at this point the most brilliant of shakespearean soliloquies tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from time to time so uh, many poets and many dramatists have called time great and time grand something which overwhelms human actions but shakespeare here through macbeth is saying that time is really something petty uh, something insignificant something really small which moves from moment to moment to us as human beings it's not the abstraction called time which we feel it's really the moment sticking uh, that we interact and creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty dead so every action of our past is really a series of uh, that that's what macbeth's life has really entailed all his past actions have been a series of fooleries committed by him and it has only led to death for him as a king as an ambitious general he really doesn't deserve uh, a grand death and this is something which he states in act 5 scene 5 his death comes much later and he says that he will face he it there's a it's it's a predicative it's a line which is making a prediction that uh, something like death will be his final destiny but uh, what he says about death what is death death is basically when a human being turns to dust that's death it's it's nothing again like time it's nothing grand it's nothing um, great it's nothing overwhelming even in its sort of forceful destructive power it's just a human being turning to dust it's it's sort of coming from dust and returning to dust ashes to ashes um, the the quotation that we remember so much is from the bible ashes to ashes dust to dust and then of course the second part of this whole speech where he compares life to a shadow and to a poor actor or a poor player who moves about on the stage trying to act his part so life really tries in 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 a life a person really tries to act out to various parts brave commander good king good husband there is a lot of effort on the part of the human being to act out his roles his characters but of course everything ends as if it was the most stupid of actions as if it's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing the phrase sound and fury has been used much later in a 20th century american novel by william uh, faulkner f a u l k n e r entitled the sound and the fury a uh, taken from my shakespeare's macbeth here but really life is something which uh, is full of so much sound and so much uh, fury and frenzy but everything of this 
grand chaos and grand expectation and grand destruction at the end comes to nothing every endeavor of ours ends it it almost dissolves into something of complete insignificance and that is what shakespeare is saying of course it signifies it is significant but it's significant a bit only in terms of nothing and not in terms of something and then uh, a messenger comes after this this scene of introspection and so much of revelatory understanding a messenger comes and brings the second of the uh, which is equivocating statements and sort of turns it around and says that uh, the wood has begun to move so the witches had told macbeth that once woods begin to move he will be defeated and he says the messenger tells macbeth that woods have begun to move and macbeth calls him a liar and a slave and then he adds if thou speakest false upon the next tree thou shalt hang alive till famine claim thee i care not if thou dost for me as much i pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth very important this phrase equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth the difference between truth and lies the difference between um correct information and incorrect information all of these boundaries all of these differences will really dissolve here and uh, now macbeth understands that what the witches were saying were really true from their perspective were really true according to a certain level of understanding but there were numerous levels of understanding beyond it which he didn't even care to look into which he didn't even care to realize and therefore it's really coming back to him to to haunt him now to finally assault him and the final stance of macbeth i gin uh, that is i begin to be a weary of the sun that is he begins to become tired of sun of living of light and wish the estate of the world were now undone ring the alarm bell blow wind come rack at least we'll die with harness on our back so now he's realized that really he's not undefeatable anymore he is going to be defeated he is going to be he's going to be assaulted and defeated but here the defiance in macbeth because once the realization comes in a tragic character he or she retaliates to it with extreme defiance and it is that is what makes macbeth so special as a tragic character uh, which is quite different from the tragic persona of lady macbeth she does not react with defiance she reacts with complete erasure of the conscious self and therefore we have 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 the sleep walking scene and the demonstration of the subconscious self uh, the conflict there there in between the two but what we have in macbeth is a pure case of complete defiance where he says that he has now call upon the army to and will fight it out and will fight till the last breath till there is anything of breath left in us in war at war Act Five, Scene Six, is a very short scene, which uh, nevertheless has two or three important uh, points in terms of connecting the ideas of previous and subsequent scenes, and of course making uh, adding something in terms of uh, in in terms of developing thematic relevance. One is um, that uh, Malcolm, of course, now. Uh, commands all the soldiers that they shall that they may remove the leafy branches or the branches which they had cut from burnum wood um, which had covered their faces and now they can sort of do away with all of that and finally make the assault and then uh, he just adds uh, something which is important for our information that uh, he's addressing his uncle the the ruler uh, that is uh, the english king seward and the young son of seward that is uh, who is young seward who will lead the battle front it's important to remember that uh, the army against macbeth is composed of mostly 
young rebels um of course um it's really not to say that this is an attack of or, or an assault of the younger generation on the old and uh, though it could be one of the reasons because just before in one of the earlier scenes of act 5 macbeth had told uh, that he is in the last leg of his life he is in the autumn of his existence the life has fallen into a seer speech in in that speech uh, but it's also that there is something new which is coming to scotland something which is different which is like a change which is coming to scotland and um, therefore it will bring about revolution it is usually youth it is usually change it is usually something new which is associated with revolution and therefore in this scene we get an idea of what that revolution against Macbeth is going to entail it is one of the ways of Shakespeare I suppose of indicating that the opposition against Macbeth is just as Macduff told is also kind of something new which is ushering in Scotland.